Welcome back, or welcome to a video about using Fusion for SOLIDWORKS people. So getting tied up. Uh, some caveats or some notes as we begin here. So data panel. Uh, I can see my previous attempt at the video here. I'm going to go ahead here and save this file. Um, saving goes up to the cloud. We'll call this PZ02. Uh, this is a pause drive 2-bit. I'm going to call this 0 0.2 because of my second attempt. <laughs> At 24, save that. It'll go ahead and make that file, uh, our design for us. And from here on, we're not really that bothered with data. So we'll just close that. Uh, left click is blue, right click is red. And we've got browser in the top left, view cube in the top right. Uh, I have my screen set up in a certain way, so I have no grid or uh, axes lines uh, until I start a sketch and even then there's no grid as usual with CAD start with the sketch and it pops up the origin now we can see it in here later if we want but for now turn it off and on I want to draw a hex profile on the bottom face notice it stays visible we can turn it back off there are folders in here can turn them on and off with the eye. Sketch arrives, sketch one, which is the one we're suddenly working on and everything's happy. Now there's a whole bunch of crates in here. For us, let's just use the S command polygon. Want to do a hex. Inscribe is fine. And snap to the origin and click it. Now that was all quite fast. Let's do it again. S polygon. Edge needs an edge to begin with. Inscribed and circumscribed will work for us. Snap. Notice I'm getting a feedback of the size, radius in this case, and number of edges to change the interface, the interact, the, the interactive part. Press tab. You can change the number of sides. Tab just flips back and forth. Six is what we want, and we're going to have to make it fairly small. Double click the middle mouse button to zoom. Click the house up on the view cube to go to isometric zoom. We're in isometric right now, it doesn't make any difference. We can use constraints because we want to constrain this. Right now we can see the sketch is not defined, meaning undefined parts are remaining. If we press escape once, we can then click and see by dragging what's going on. I would like one of my vertexes to be on this X axis. We can see in the view cube here. Uh, I can tumble and rotate by holding shift and the middle mouse button. And I can zoom by roll in the middle mouse button. If I just hold the middle mouse button, I get a pan. So arrange it somewhat towards the top view. If I click top, it'll go to the top. You can also, if you want, old school, grab the view cube and move it. it. Shows you a big pivot point. Oh. Anyway, so what we've got here is we need some constraints. Now, one of the most useful are the first two, horizontal, vertical, and coincident. Let's go for horizontal, vertical. Adds a horizontal, vertical constraint, usually in the midpoint of the line. So now we're locked, kind of semi-locked. We can't rotate it, but we can still change the size. Dimension is required. Shortcut for that is D. No, so just D. You can also search for it if you want. So search dimension. Go across the flats. Uh, standard quarter inch bit. So that's 0.25 inch. Now our standard size is in millimeters. So. We're going to be type an inch here, but we get the result in millimeters. Finish the sketch. Notice the sketch now is fully defined. Little walk. And we can rename it here if we wish with a long double click. Uh, profile extrude. Going to need another sketch. So let's go ahead and try that. Um, it's tempting to do the extrude first. We'll just do that first. E is a shortcut for extrude. There's only one profile. 
dragging out. It's going to be around 25 millimeters. You can type that in and you can keep dragging around to change that. So go to about 25. Say OK. Easy. Now, if we go back and have a look here, that's what we want to model. We need to cut this away here. And some flutes need to be cut out and this little ball retent and a chamfer at the back. We have a sketch for this. So we're going to be following this. But the goal here is to be able to do this in minimal sketches and minimal features. Uh, one of the rules that we'd like to stick to is put all the sketches at the front. So we're going to need some sort of revolved cut. I would like to put the sketch before the feature. One way to do that is actually drag the history head back across the feature. This will have the effect of putting the next sketch in between the two. This is good. So new sketch on this time the ZX plane. Uh, rectangle. Start with. The shortcut for that is R. And we can snap it and drag it. Escape once. Now we can see here we are unconstrained these ways. Now we can grab this vertex and get both. Go the other way, no crash doesn't matter. Uh, we do want to use this previous sketch to drive this sketch. So one thing we can use is a coincident and straddle the sketches in a way so we pick coincident between this old vertex or previous and the new one. It turns black meaning fully defined and we notice ah we're only missing the height. Now this is a good plot a good time sorry to uh, define the height of the bit and that's 25. This is way more obvious. Uh, so we now here have two sketches. We'll rename this guy, call it say profile cuts or something like that. And we can pull our playhead beyond there and see our extrusion. It's not at the right spot. How do we use the two sketches to drive the extrusion and edit the Feature. Another way to do that, sorry, we can cancel that. Another way to do that is actually right click on the part, the feature itself, edit feature. Cancel that again. One other option, edit feature profile sketch. That's the hex. So let's edit the feature. So instead of going up at this certain distance, let's go to object, pick one of those called vertexes on the sketch and say, okay. If we right click on these guys up in the browser, we can show dimensions. It's kind of useful because then we can just change this to do a test of a 20. Perfect. Everything jumps around correctly. The correct height is 25. Here we go. So doing well, everything's kind of controlled. What's the point of all this? If we look at our part here, we see this profile coming down, which makes a significant amount of the positive drive head and business end of it. Let's do a little extra piece here just to get a feel for how this might work. Now, the temptation is to make a new sketch, but we already have a sketch, which we're not using very much right now, this rectangle. Maybe we can use it for something. If I right click on the sketch, so highlight, see it turning blue. You can right click on that and get some options. I don't know if I can do this all at once, there we go. Edit sketch. Let's put a line. Thanks for a second, nothing happens. We have to do something with this. If we go ahead here and do a revolve, it's tempting to pick the cutoff. So the profile can sometimes be hard to select. Click and hold. There it is. Axis, we can pick any axis we wish. We can even go into the origin and pick the Z. And it assumes a cut, right? So this is a typical Autodesk behavior. So we're picking an edge and we're gonna do a cut, it thinks. And this is not bad, it's not bad for us. The problem with this is that each new thing kind of needs a new sketch um, because of the way we're picking this. 
there is another option. So instead of doing a cut on this, like a kind of a negative cut, another option is to actually change it to other ways. So if we look at say a join here, so after the fact decision, we get this cone or sorry, cap. Interestingly, there's an intersection. Now this makes no sense right now until we change the profile. So right now I can't pick the thing. If I hold down command in the Mac or control in the PC, which won't do anything in the Mac, all of a sudden I can turn off the preview and I can pick more stuff. So if I just select these, I can toggle them on and off. There's the full intersect, so I get the full amount, the full sweep, the full shape. But if I do this, I get a different result. I can drag the sketch around. I can start to understand that this might be actually quite good. So we're going to go with this. So all of a sudden, the point of this rectangle starts to make sense. Sorry, start the point of this rec that rectangle starts to kind of emerge. So if you can't see your sketches, sorry, a small little window here. If these are missing, just turn them on. You should be able to see the sketch, you can drag it around. Again, to reiterate, if your dimensions are showing, you can right click, you can right click on this. Well, once it's unselected, you can right click and high dimensions, show dimensions, it's just a toggle. Let's go ahead here and use this to our advantage. We're gonna edit the sketch, right click on it, edit sketch. This is our line. I want to do this all efficiently, so let's do it in one pass. I'm gonna delete this line. We're gonna have a small error, but not a disaster error. Let's do a little practice run of the line we want. Uh, polylines are easy in all CAD. To finish, you can either click the green check or double click the end. It keeps the act the line tool active. Now, that's all great, but it's not really what I want to undo here. Um, one other way to do this, uh, one extra thing is you might notice on the icon itself, there's a kind of a strange polyline with a curve sort of arrangement. So let's try that line, L, click. And then if I click and hold here, I get an arc, finish. This is what I want. Straight line, out of corner, arc, snapped to the rectangle. So one way to select is to double click the whole polyline. Another way is to draw a box around it. Another way is to touch. So clicking up to the left, you, or dragging up to the left, you get a yellow, everything that encapsulates, so this is the end. And then on the other side, everything, it totally covers. So everything that touches, everything it covers. Or double click. Let's do the line in the space we would like it to be. Rolling with the mouse, trying to get it about the right spot. Down and stop. Make sure you don't snap to the midpoint here. Okay, so this is good. Let's have a look at the sketch. It's aligned to the cell. Oh, the straight line here. Four down. It's dimension on the diameter here, radius and height. Let's do all those sequentially. Uh, first. Coincident, the top. The, notice what happens here. Undo. This is an open end. So, uh, redo for me is just uh, Shift, uh, Command Z. I want to be a little aware of what's going on here. This means this is totally unconstrained. If I put a coincident to this, the line doesn't have to be on the line to be coincident with it. It'll snap there. No, it doesn't turn black, but it does allow movement, but it's locked onto the line. Second thing, 
This is a center line now. Notice we've got profiles, which highlight. So these are a, these can be used to make geometry, like for example, our intersection revolved sweep. And we want to be a little bit more aware of this. So we also want to make a revolved sweep. Let's turn this into a center line. The advantage of this is it knows what to do if we want to do a revolve. It also gives us a chance to do a diametral dimension 5.9. look here so we're four down from the top just imagine that i'll go to this point here is probably or this line this line there we go so four almost there so this point is now defined but this line angle is off if we zoom in here if I pick a point, so a point, sketch point, if I carefully find that intersection, you'll notice it's snapping there, escape one. So if I pull this, it now pulls the line around. Or conversely, if I drag the line, you can see the point moving. Perfect. Its diameter is 2.5. Line turns black, fully defined. Even though this whiskery looking thing is sticking up here, it still has the right profile. Next, six and radius and 15 up from the base. It's tempting to pick one of these. Sometimes there's other sketch will get in the way. Hide that guy. So you can hide things on the fly, turn them back on and off. Back to fully defined. Ooh, and look at that. It seems to know what's going on here. So it's picked up all the stuff we've put in and now our new part is looking good. Perfect. So that's all looking good. Now we notice, hold on. We're not, we don't have that chamfer or any of that stuff. So we've got this chamfer and this corner cut out. Let's do those as well. Let's go over here and have a look. So we need to, now do we do a new sketch? Well, we're starting to get used to this. No, let's just edit this sketch. Here's a line here. Let's snap here, snap, not to the middle. Watch out for the middle, just somewhere over here. Get it set up to mention that guy. Forty-five. Let's see that sketch that we need. Forty-five by five on the diameter again. So five. So look at that. Next is this small chunk here. Now it's hard to see, but this looks like it's ninety degrees and equal and all that stuff going on. So let's do that. Point six across, eight up. So my usual technique or habit is to set it up logic quite nice and big so I can see what's going on and then get it uh, set up with dimensions after so we have a perpendicular constraint that's all good 90 degrees problem is here that of course when we start dragging this we can move this around it doesn't seem to care that it, it's not even so how can we fix this? Well, the equals constraint will give us the correct behavior. So now when I start dragging this, I can't do anything but stay in the same proportion. That's what I want. So our next thing is just dimensioning. Our height away from the base here is eight. And our size is 0.6. There's the decimal 0.6. So dimension across the two vertexes. Just trying to drag that out of the way. And if we want, we can pull this over as well. However you want to arrange this. Now we're back to fully defined. Perfect. And finish the sketch. 
Uh, sometimes it won't pick up, especially when you've nested a new set of profiles inside. Let's have a look at this revolve or So we've lost our profiles. You'll notice it's picked all the profiles. So there's one, two, three, four. So if we hold down command to turn off the preview, we can start to turn our uh, profiles off and on. Now we have two more down here. Oh, perfect. And the last one. Oh, nice. That looks good. Say okay. It's looking good. Perfect. Next, small pause here while we have a look. Flutes. Uh, this, we've got everything kind of done. We're actually quite far along here. The problem is these flutes and we kind of get worried a bit, like how, where are we gonna put this and all that sort of stuff. Let's have a look at the sketch we're provided with. And all of a sudden, hopefully, uh, some stuff starts to kind of make sense here. This is the cutting tool. It's in the same sketch because why not? So let's go ahead here and figure this out. Have a look. From the center of the bit to the center of the cut until is 18. That means this FX here, 50, or 25 is the flute width or half the flute width. So we're gonna kind of do this in the steps. Also, we've got some ripple up here. Notice this little this OG curve goes down where it's in the wrong spot, actually. Let's get, we're going to put it above to point 0.1 high, and otherwise fairly un, undimensioned. So we're going to do a couple of things here in order. Uh, I'm actually going to do it in a kind of reverse order to make a point here. I'm going to do the flutes first and then add this uh, top convolution uh, at the end, just to make a point about history and usability and all that sort of stuff. So first, the big circle. Let's go back over there. Again, attempted to make a new sketch. And also because of the flute, attempted to make a sketch off the plane and all that sort of stuff. Uh, my argument is that's confusing to the future you and to uh, another team member or whatever. We want to put as much as we can within reason uh, in one sketch. So I'm going to actually add it to this sketch we're already using. And this might not make much sense for a little while here. Uh, I'm keeping in mind that we have a revolve coming off here. Again, maybe logically we could put the sketch over here because we're going to cut that. But in a way, using a circle over on the other side makes way more sense. It's kind of a separate feature, right? So this is the revolved lathe, if you want to think of it that. Revolved cuts, profiles removed. This is the next profile, our next sort of function next step we want to line this up somehow and we have a dimension to it and all the rest of it so we want to use formulas as much as we can when we use a formula we'll see this fx so how do we get this set up we see here this is an inspection dimension, so we're not using this to drive anything. All we know is that the center of the cutting tool is 18 away from the center line of the bit. Now, as soon as we try and dimension to this, we're going to end up with a, a diametral size. We can go with this, do a little bit of math, but we can also right click here and call that a dog loft, the diameter, and say 18. We want half a millimeter between this, these two parts, between the circle at its maximum and this edge. Now, how do we do all that? First, we have to line up the circle, coincident with this line. It turns black because it knows where it is, but it doesn't know the diameter. So that's good. Escape once, put it up here out the way. Now, how do we get this to be half a millimeter away from this point? 
Well, we could actually just say the diameter of this circle is this. But if we say times two, so if we just click the dimension, you can actually get it to use an existing is a part of a formula. If we double click again, we see D16, the name of this dimension times two, but that's not giving us exactly what we want here. That's not right. We need a half millimeter. So if we, we could keep typing in here, say, okay, well, let's call it D16 times two minus 0.5. Okay, does that work? Let's do a check here. If we use the measure tool, shortcut I for inspect, we see here that we've got a whole bunch of stuff happens here, but the minimum distance is 0.25. That's not right. Then we realize, oh, okay, so if we escape out of that tool, we can adjust this again. This is minus 0.5 on the radius so if on the diameter which is what it is it needs to be one diameter is 35 do another inspect half a millimeter perfect does nothing now again what do we do with this well we could add it to this well that doesn't make sense because it's just going to cut out from this, the whole thing. Let's try it just to get a feel for it. If I add this now, you can see it, it's not at all what I want. It's not giving me anything useful. So I need a new feature. It's actually an extrude. Pick the circle, start pulling it, and this is in the positive direction. So if we start pulling this, you can see positive over here. So the positive is actually back into the part in my orientation here, and it starts cutting away because it thinks you want to cut. If we accept this, the problem is that we notice it's right on the plane. We need a flute, and we're starting to realize this is a millimeter thick. How do we deal with that? Well, we can actually start to extrude, not from the profile plane, but an offset. And it is 0.5. See if that works. Sometimes it, the profile, what's going on here? Sometimes it gets a little jammed. I don't know, there's something wrong with my screencast. Software is pushing a button for free. Anyway, there's our cut. Now we're just going to go off to the end of the part. We can say distance all if we wish, and it just cuts that away. Well, that's quite good. Nice, kind of getting there. Hide the sketch. So that's all good. We could have eight more of those and we might be, well, that looks like it's a bad thing. Now we can add a fillet. F for fillet and all that sort of stuff. The problem here is that this tends to be not ultra safe. Like when you do a pattern of a cut uh, in your past <laughs> history, you might have discovered that that's not always easy for the CAD to keep up with. So instead, one approach and the pr approach that's I think way better is to instead of doing a cut, change it to a new body. Now, it might not like this too much. Uh, you sometimes have to drag it again. Now, you'll notice when you zoom in here, it's actually the preview is not cutting the part. So if I just give it a standard distance, like say 10. Offset's still 0.5, everyone's looking good. Now I can, it's very strange to do this, but we're gonna do this in steps. I can actually use the Boolean to deal with this. So I'll combine target body is what I want to cut. And the operation is the tool bodies are cutting tool body. Do not keep the tool body. I can keep the tool, it'll keep the body for more work. Now, what do we end up with here? What actually is going on here? Let's step back. 
I make the first body, sorry, but second body is the tool body. And when we do our Boolean cut, second body is subsumed or absorbed by the feature. This is a silly way to do it. You might be thinking the, prob the problem here is that it's a lot of work. The advantage of this is we can now do some stuff in between. If I step back once and do a mirror of the body around you know, the, mirror, the mirror plane, as soon as you go to blue, it says, which plane? How about this one? I now have two bodies. I can modify this to add this new tool body. Lost my tool bodies. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, make sure I've got the target body collect. So maybe restart target. Easy way to do this is now just draw a box around the tool bodies and say, okay, eventually. This is good. Now, again, you're thinking so bad. If I go stepping back here before the mirror now, I can put a fillet on this tool body. Say it's a simple F for fillet point one, just on that one edge. The advantage of this is now when I, because I mirrored an entire body, I get the fillet mirrored as well. Nice. And then when I do the Boolean, I get the fillet inside the Boolean. Now we know what's coming next. Step back one more time. And now we're gonna do a pattern. That's uh, some sort of pattern. Oh, there it is, circular pattern. Bodies, let's pick these two guys. We only ever gonna have two here. Axis, can pick the Z if we want to be precise. We can open up the browser and pick the Z. Three. Can pull this guy around a billion no again four is probably what we're after because we have four patterns okay now this doesn't work perfectly because we haven't added these new bodies so when we're in the tool bodies we should be able to just select and it tends to toggle back and forth so an easy way is just to unselect all of them all the tool bodies pick the whole lot say okay there's our part, nice. So we've got our body more or less ready. It's one part missing. Top surface is flat, perfectly flat. If we look at the real part or the thing that we're looking at. We've got this, it's actually kind of an OG curve. It's slightly bumped up. It's hard to see here, but we've got to modify this slightly. It's a 0.1 distance sticking up. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, again, there's usually some resistance to going all the way back and doing things, and people tend to add more sketches and do more revolves on top. This leads to nothing but problems, trying to you know, extra little skins and little dark faces and all this sort of stuff. We're gonna do it in a methodical way, rational way, and adjust the top here. How do we do that? Well, it's all the way back to our first and second sketch. Edit the sketch. Rolls the history back for us. You can have a look here. Now, I'm making a point here. I want to add a OG curve here. Now, an OG curve is essentially a line that goes into two curves. We would like them lots of types of OG curves that we want this one to be even, meaning equal. So we'll have two equal curves and we'll get rid of this one at the end of the thing. So that's our plan. We're gonna put that in here, double click to get rid of it. So do it again. I can start anywhere I want. One curve. I'm gonna try and snap that to that very top point there. Perfect. Two and equals for those two curves looking okay. Now this line is not helping me anymore. 
we can either just delete it or we can add it, turn it into construction by pressing the X. X toggles, you can see it actually switching. Leave it as an X. Now, we've got these, I've got these line, oh, lost my X there. I've got these two curves. I want to keep them under control. One way is to modify these origins. They're equal right now, but they're not balanced, right? Because they're not centered and all that sort of stuff. So what we need to do is use the surrounding geometry to organize this OG curve. So using a coincident, I can lock the origin, sorry, the center of one arc to the center line of the part. We'd like to do that again, but we don't have a line. One way is to add a line, the construction line, and stick that onto it. Another way is just to make it horizontal, or vertical above. Let's try pulling this line around and see what happens. Oh, nice. So that's good. It looks like it's under control. All we have to do is dimension this distance at point one. We need to use this as the revolve, so we don't have a region yet. One last little edge, and it gets added on. Now, now we have two regions that we have to manage. One trick here, one kind of pleasant uh, trick here, is to actually manage the regions using more construction toggles. If I toggle this line at the top, don't delete it because it's got dimensions attached and all that sort of stuff. So we don't never want to delete it, but we can manage our region by constructifying it. Then we have one region, which includes our new chunk, our new OG curve area. Perfect. One dilemma, our circle, the cut tool is now not perfectly aligned with the top of the part. Now this is very, very picky, but we'd like to be right. If I hover over this center part, you'll notice a coincident array, uh, constraint arrives or appears or shows. If I click that once, it highlights. I can press delete. Uh oh, well, now our circle is free vertically. And then we realize, oh, hold on, I can just simply make it coincident with this new line the one, uh, construction line that we put in, nice. And then to keep the whole part totally constrained, we can also just put the end of the line on the circle. Now, let's see what happens. We have, it's not broken, but it's also not picking up our new area now, so what do we need to change? The dilemma is actually right back at the start. So if we we're trying to find what's wrong here, so we step our history through, right? So because we added this uh, part here, we didn't actually shift our initial extrusion up to this new level. It's still at the old vertex. The vertex is still there, so we don't have any errors. So all we have to do is adjust this to our new point. So if we delete or cancel our object, we can pick a new one. You can see here that it's now going up to the top. Perfect. And nothing else is fine. Nothing else is broken. Everything looks good because our history is still re rewound. Let's play forward one at a time. Perfect. So our intersection works now, not having to deal with that. And as we would expect, our our cutting bodies are doing just fine. And there we go. We now have a correctly modeled top. I'll just hide these sketches so they're on the way. So there's our finished part. Looks good at the top. Minimal problems uh, with the rebuild. Actually, none really. Nothing unexpected. And that's the end of our positive bit. Uh, thanks for watching.
uh, there's a lot there. Uh, maybe just uh, reference reference back to this from time to time. Anyway, over to you.